Good morning, it's Toby from Lift Tech Mobility. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about batteries. We're gonna be talking about the different types of batteries, the history of batteries, uh, the risks of batteries, um, where to buy your batteries from, flying with batteries, um, charging and storage. So let's go from the top. So batteries basically started off with lead acid batteries. They were okay, they were a nice start, but they were heavy. Um, they gave you poor range. Um, they discharged very easily if you didn't keep them charged up. Um, and they were they were dangerous, but not as dangerous as poor lithium batteries could be. But it was a good starting point. The main issue was that they were very, very heavy. We then moved on to glass map absorbent batteries, AGM. Um, and then we got into wet cell dry um, gel. And then lastly, which is what we've ended up now with dry cell lithium batteries. Dry cell lithium batteries are basically lots of little batteries inside a case all bundled up that are dry. Um, which makes them safer for airline travel, um, for charging, storage and things like that. So, what are the best type of wheelchair batteries? The best types of wheelchair batteries are dry cell, um, ones from reputable companies um, and also reputable factories overseas. So, about 90% of all batteries are made in China. So, as we know, if you buy poor quality stuff from China, you've got a good chance of it going faulty, catching on fire, exploding, um, you know, not charging up correctly. Um, but if you find the right battery companies and you go from the good manufacturers, they are some of the best batteries you can buy anywhere in the world. Hence why companies like Apple use them and um, Samsung and um, basically every other decent company in the world that uses some sort of lithium batteries for whatever their products are. Let's talk about the best charging protocol. If you buy a good quality lithium battery, you've got two ways of charging it normally. One is on the chair, and that's usually done through the port on your joystick. That will then thread through the, uh, go through the wiring, down through the chair. If it's a decent chair, it will have an ECU, it will go through the ECU and out to the batteries. Uh, if it's a poor chair, it will just go straight through the joystick and down straight into the batteries. If you want to remove your batteries, it's nice to be able to charge them off the chair as well. The advantages of this are, let's say you're out with your friends and family, you go for like a, a muddy good day out, um, on a nice dog walk. Um, obviously you're around friends' houses, they're like, oh, I don't really want you to bring your wheelchair inside because it's gonna get the carpets dirty. Okay, no problem, I'll just remove the batteries and we can charge the batteries inside the house. So it's very useful to be able to have a, uh, an opportunity or um, a way of charging your batteries off the chair. And you'll find that 90% of batteries, if they're good quality, should have that option. Um, you want batteries to be as light as possible because then you want to be easy to remove. Most quality chairs as well nowadays come with two batteries reason being is one you can get around the airline um uh the airline um what's the word um protocol and stuff like that with them because you're splitting up the amount of wattage per battery so it's much safer to have x amount in this battery and x amount in that battery rather than double that in just one battery so that's a great way of getting past flying regulations but maintaining good range um so with charging the safest thing to do is to charge it up well if they're poor quality batteries i certainly would not recommend so any of these wheelchairs that are about a thousand quid or below um i certainly would not recommend charging them overnight because you are asleep these batteries do and they can catch on fire and do um it's just a fact um so obviously you wouldn't want your house to go up whilst you're sleeping um i would always say lift tech batteries charge them whilst you sleep we've ne we've sold over 10,000 batteries now, not a single one's ever caught on fire. We even reckon, yeah, so we literally say, do it, charge them while you're sleeping, then you've got full use of the chair as and when you need to use it. Um, but yeah, anything that you're not sure of, or if it's a new product to you, or if it's cheaper, do, just charge it during the day whilst you're around. So worst case scenario, if anything was ever to spark, you can dispose of it quickly. Um, so that's good charging uh, protocol. What I would not recommend doing is do not leave your batteries on charge when you're not using them like you used to with the old lead acid day, uh, batteries back in the day. A great charging protocol as well is drop, drain your battery. So on the battery indicator, on which most chairs will have on the joystick, drain it 90% and then fully charge it. Drain it 90%, fully charge it. Drain it 90%, fully charge it. Don't trickle charge it. Don't leave it on charge um, and don't run it completely flat. That's the last thing you want to do. Batteries have memory. Um, Every time you basically completely run it out, you're, you're messing up with the memory and the cells. You want to keep the cells fully topped up um, and you want to maintain the quality of the cells in the batteries. Um, and by either triple charging them or completely killing your batteries, you are killing those cells. Um, they're quite clever. They thrive off like um, activity lithium batteries. So 
Um, safe storage of batteries. So safe storage of batteries uh, would be in, a, in a, a normal cool dry place. You don't want them to be exposed to too much temperature and you don't want to have them exposed to too much, um, well, cold temperature, so heat or cold. Um, so don't, not a good idea really keeping your wheelchairs in the boot of your car, especially if you live up north or in Scotland. Um, or in this heat of the summer, if we had a heat wave, it's not a good idea keeping them in the car because obviously it magnifies the heat straight through your windows and you know your car could get up to temperatures of sort of 45, 50 degrees, uh, which at that point makes it dangerous for lithium batteries. Right, batteries and being a fire risk. Now, honestly, I cannot stress how important this is. Pretty much every single one of our competitors' um, whole warehouses have gone up in flames. Now, I'm not gonna name names, but if you're interested, it's very easy to look up which mobility companies um, have gone up in flames. All it takes is one cell in a damage, uh, one damaged cell in a battery to make that battery catch on fire, the whole thing to explode, and if any other batteries are near it, boom, you literally have an explosion. So, um, what I would say is, this is probably the biggest reason not to buy a cheap chair, not just because they're bulky or, um, you know, the components are less good or you're going to have as much capabilities, but safety. They they do and it, it they they will like they you might be able you know you could more than ch like chance are you're going to be a lucky one it's not happened to you but i do not know a single other one of our competitors some of our competitors have whole warehouses they've gone up not just once they've gone up twice luckily touch wood because we pay more for batteries and we, we only sell quality this never happened to us but it does happen so just be very very cautious with buying lithium batteries um so our battery first our competitors like I say, we buy literally from the top factories in the world, whether it's batteries, chairs, whatever, hence why our prices are 2,000, not 850 pounds, which as we talked about in previous is, if you are buying a chair for 850, 900 quid, that wheelchair is costing $340 to make. That means the batteries going into that chair are about $40. Would you honestly trust a chair that's got a battery that costs $40? And do you know what the funniest thing is? Those batteries that cost forty dollars and their chairs that are like eight hundred and fifty. Have you ever looked on their website to see how much their spare batteries are? They're charging two hundred and fifty. How can you charge two hundred and fifty pounds for a whole wheelchair that costs eight fifty? We we charge two hundred and fifty pounds, but our wheelchairs cost two thousand. So honestly, the maths just does not work out. Honestly, one, it's daylight robbery. Two, they're crappy batteries, and three, they're probably just going to catch on fire. And four, they're just crap three hundred and forty dollar chairs. Why would you buy a chair that's got potential to be completely dangerous? So our batteries are lighter. Um, most of our stuff is either six or it's ten AH. Um, so all airline compatible. Um, the safer. Like I said, we sold ten thousand batteries now. Not a single one's ever caught on fire. Um, you get better range. So be very very careful with not getting caught out. We put on two different types of ranges on our um, on our website. So we've got a treadmill range that basically means. If you were to stick your wheelchair on a running treadmill, speed level four, that battery would run out in say 16 miles. A real world range is half it and add a bit on. So if we said a treadmill range of 16, a real world would be half of 16 is A, add a bit, it'd be 10 to 12. That would be a realistic range for a top range of 16. Um, do not get caught out in other people's wheelchairs. Specs, when they're putting what the spec of their battery in their range is, that is a max spec, it's not a real spec. As far as I've seen, we're the only company that actually puts the difference between a max and realistic what you're actually going to get. Uh, so don't get caught out in that. But a crappy battery will last about two years. Our batteries last six years. So that's straight away we've got four more years. Also, our batteries will have much, much more range. Um, also, I'm going to quickly jump to AH. Understanding AH and powers means nothing. Our 6AH batteries are as good as some of our competitors' 12AH for 15AH batteries. If you buy a crap 15 or 12AH battery from a crappy back alley co um, company in China, they will give the same amount of power and, as an output as a good 6AH battery. So do not get caught up on AH. I've had 20, when we first started, when batteries were less good, we had one big 20AH battery. That 20AH battery, is was gave less range than our modern day 10 ah batteries so do not get caught out on that right flying with lithium batteries the gold standard of lithium batteries is two times six ah batteries that's six h just so no stands for amp power um a little thing to get watt out which is what a lot of the um companies ask for 
So AH times V, which is volts, equals WH or WAH watt hours. So let's say I've got a 6 AH battery times 24 volts um, is 6, 4, 24 times 6. Oh, God, what is 24? 24 times 6. 144, I should actually know that, I do actually know that, 144 watt hours. So that is what, so if you ever, if, a com, if an airline's saying whatever, what is the WAH, it's your amp hour times your volt equals wattage. So if you had then had a 10 AH battery, I can actually do the maths on this one a little bit easier, so that's 240 watt hours. So a lot of, a lot of um, the airlines will go, you have to have one battery under 300, that's quite a common one. Um, or, uh, sorry, two batteries under. The maximum has to be for your wheelchair 300. So that's why they like to split it between six um, and 240. So that means you, a lot of airlines are like one 10 AH battery or two 6 AH batteries. So that's the AH WH uh, formula, just so you know. Um, but yeah, flying with lithium batteries, check with your airline provider. I'd say about 50% now say hand luggage and 50% would be hand luggage, but in a special battery isolation bag. We do them, they're fireproof, they separate the batteries um, and they're in a nice kind of padded um, holder. So it keeps the batteries nice and safe. Um, if they were to catch on fire, it keeps them contained and it keeps them away from the wheelchair. I would literally say only about 5% of airlines like to have your wheelchair batteries kept on your wheelchair in the hold but everything has to be also very obviously disconnected so no power's running through it. Um, but they'd much rather actually have them separate from the batteries now. Um, and yeah, same again, 6 AH, 10 AHs, they're great. Um, if you start going up to like 20 AH batteries or 15 and things like that, the airlines just won't accept them. So the thing is with health and safety, it's only ever gonna go one way. It's only ever gonna get more stringent, more along the 10s, even definitely the sixes. It's not gonna start going into the 12, the 15s, the 20s because um, you know the world is just becoming safer um that is pretty much everything but if there's one thing to really take home from here is safety i would honestly say and it's a fact like these batteries do catch on fire like it is the thing you see it and then you see it and it's one of our biggest questions that we get actually through the website or um on the phone you know i'm a bit worried about the batteries and we don't have to be like you know we sell like i said over ten thousand batteries and nothing's ever caught on fire you know, we feel more than comfortable telling our customers to charge them while they sleep. You know, that's on our heads if anything's to go up. We, we're not worried about that. Um, luckily, we're one of the only companies in the whole of the UK that can say that our building's never caught on fire, our batteries are never caught on fire. And reason being is because we don't buy cheap shit. We buy decent quality batteries from good suppliers and we stick by it. You know, the reason why our chairs cost what they cost is because they're good quality and they're safe. Biggest thing is the safety when you use them in capabilities and safety with it when it comes to batteries. The last thing you need with old and vulnerable people is, is products that aren't fit for purpose or safe. So on that note, I'm gonna leave it. But there was, there was a lot of useful information here, but there's a lot of serious talk and there is a clear understanding now between, you know, the difference between a 250 pound battery, legitimate, which is what we charge. And I'll be honest, our cost price is about 180 quid. Their cost price, these crappy batteries are about $40. You know, and they're charging 250 quid to you when they're retailing. Doesn't really work, does it? You're basically getting ripped off and rubbish. So um, there you go. Another straight talking lift tech video as we like to do them. And I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.